Hello and welcome to HST tutorial video number 13. This video is on performing batch simulations in ADS. So for this purpose we have two sample designs and we'll explain it one by one. So let's look at one of the schematics where we do have a channel simulation setup. Starting from left we do have 56G PAM4 Certis transmitter with a proper data rate along with the TX panel and between we have host and compliance board channel with individual S parameter files extracted by performing FEM simulation. On the right hand side we do have a receiver package and receiver you know, channel simulator model where we do have CTLE enabled in the receiver model. If you look at the CTLE settings uh, by clicking on edit button we can see there are two zeros and three poles defined and these zeros and poles are using certain variable names. So now let's look at where is this variable definition defined. In this bench we do have you know few equations which are calculating the poles and zero values and poles and zero values are being passed using a certain standard you know recommended set and in this case uh, we are using a 3db you know CTLE specification and then calculating the desired parameter for our receiver model. There are uh, some other variables defined where we have uh, things like 5db CTLE, 5.5db, 6db, 7.5db and 9db. Now this is the very typical way how a typical standard provides various CTLE curves and from those curves we can derive this data. We have three I probes into our simulation. One is to look at transmitter output, channel output and the receiver output. In these I probes we can select the desired measurements which we may like to perform. Uh, for PAM4 kind of application uh, some of the measurements are possible and some of the measurements are not possible. However, in this case the key measurements which we are looking to perform is the waveform and some of the key I parameters. So here by selecting one parameter called VSR PAM4 we can do all the typical I height and I width and those kind of measurements. After the simulation is finished we can see there is a receiver output I density plot uh, where the eye seems to be quite open. If we insert a new plot and select the channel output density plot, uh, we can see the performance uh, and the channel degradation which happens when the signal comes out of channel. So here in this case we can see the eye is quite closed um, after it goes through the channel but the 3db CTLE is doing pretty okay. Now if you want to explore other CTLE combinations in a traditional flow, um, designers may be forced to you know, activate and deactivate uh, some of these plots. However, using the batch simulation capability in ADS, this process can be simplified by a great amount. So we can go ahead and place the batch simulation controller. Uh, we double click it and batch controller can work in two modes, a sweep plan where we can use any of the variables which we have declared in ADS schematic we can add that to our sweep plan and define the start and stop you know frequency range or the parameter range but in this case we will use a sweep module and we will use a mode called CSV list and this list basically we have six conditions or six CTLE value combination so we have defined those value combination in a CSV file if we open the CSV file in notepad we can see the same variable names which we have defined in ADS schematic and each row here is providing the combination for one specific CTLE setting. So here we have row number 2 to 7 uh, that is 6 conditions uh, for the 6 CTLE settings. So we would like to sim, you know, run through each of these settings and see which CTLE is the best combination uh, to do my channel analysis. We can go ahead and add the channel simulator to be performed after each uh, for the each value combination. Now note these variables are deactivated because eventually we are going to use uh, we are going to read the values from a CSV file. 
Another important thing uh, which we can do in ADS uh, from channel sim template, a library palette, we could place iProbe report component. So this will help to generate an Excel file uh, with all the measurements which we are performing using iProbe for all the batch iterations. So we can double click and define my file name such as my measurements dot xls. Please note it has to be dot xls and not dot xls. Okay. So once we define dot xls and we run simulation now ADS will perform batch simulation, open up the CSV file, take one value combination and then those value combination will be passed to equation to calculate. So in this case, I just uh, shortened the video um, when the simulation finished and now we can see there are six eye diagrams overlapped on each other. So sometime after batch simulation, you know, this data mining can also be, you know, quite challenging to do. So if we go ahead and use a dummy plot and look at the variable info of our density plot, we can see our eye diagram is a three dimensional array in which the second and third dimension are the inherent, but the first dimension is for batch number. Now, in order to do data mining, we can just insert a slider from insert slider command. And with every batch simulation using CSV file, we have this batch number variable. So we will attach the batch number variable onto the slider. So whenever we move slider on this axis, it will go through batch number one, two, and three. Now for data mining, because we know Rx out dot density or any density plot is a three dimensional array, we can do a single click in capital bracket. We can enter this syntax M1, which is name of the marker underscore batch number, which is variable underscore index. So this is a very common you know, syntax. And then for second and third arguments, we will just use a wildcard of colon colon. By doing so, um, you know, ADS uh, data display will now get the batch number from the slider and then only show one I plot. Let's do that again for the channel output as well. However, here channel is constant, so it will not change even if when we change the slider. But just for practice, let's do that again. So again, for remembrance, the syntax is M1, which is marker name underscore batch number, which is uh, the variable underscore index, which will provide the index of the marker. So once we shift marker to second, you can see the batch number is equal to two now, and the I diagram is different. So we can go through, we go to third iteration, fourth batch iteration, fifth batch iteration, and sixth. And correspondingly, as you can see, the left-hand side I plot is changing. However, channel output is constant. So this is one of the ways we can simplify our job quite a bit. Now in second example, uh, or before we go to second example, let's go to our data folder and scroll through to see uh, Excel file, uh, which we um, you know, reference. So this is my measurements.xls file. If we double click and open this file, now this will have data for all the I probes for all the batch analysis. So if we just slightly zoom in, uh, first, we can see all the batch combination in terms of batch number and the variables which we have declared in the CSV file, and then corresponding measurements for the I probe in terms of Rx out, um, you know, channel out, and so on. So this is a very comprehensive CSV file with all the results of our simulation. Now users can use all the Excel capability to do the desired data mining of the data. Uh, also note in new ADS, uh, we can also export this data with a simple function to Python and we can do all the data processing with Python also. Now, this was one result where we have CTLE variables. Now we can look at the second example where we have a similar bench um, and CTLE here is a specific constant, but now we have a channel uh, for which we have various S parameter file and we would like to sweep through various S parameter files. So here we have declared a variable uh, channel underscore SNP and in double quotes, we have provided the path uh, where the S parameter file of the channel is located. So in this case is dot forward slash, which means the data folder. If we double click on SNP component, the syntax to be used in file name is at the rate and the variable name. So 
this will help to pass the channel you know s parameter file name to the to the snp component under batch simulation we have a similar setup uh, just that we are using a separate csv file and if you open that csv file let's look at the format it's pretty similar to the earlier one just that now we only have one variable here with channel underscore snp name and as we can see here, we have four SNP files, so four S4P files, and we will go through one, you know, these S4P file one by one when we perform the batch simulation. So this way, even user has 20, 30, 50 S parameter file, as long as you have a simple CSV file, we can scroll through all the files very, very, you know, easy using batch simulator. So let's run the simulation and have a look at the data. But this will happen on a specific CTLE because remember, we are not sweeping the CTLE value. So right now I have enabled a 3DB CTLE uh, settings uh, for our channel analysis. Using the similar concept like what we used um, you know, before, we have four batch numbers and marker is currently placed for batch number one. And we can see the corresponding channel output and the I output. If you go to batch number two, which is using second S parameter file, we can see the channel I closes, uh, but CTLE still have some opening. In third and fourth, uh, virtually the 3DB CTLE becomes ineffective and we can't see any I opening. Now at this stage, uh, we can go back to our schematic and uh, disable the 3DB CTLE and probably use 5.5DB CTLE setting. And we can go ahead and perform the batch simulation again. Now with these settings, um, <clears throat> please remember um, that uh, we are not sweeping CTLE values, but in reality, uh, we could define a single Excel file with all CTLE combination as well as S parameter. Now with that simulation, you can see even the batch number four is showing an open eye. So this CTLE seems to be more effective uh, for working with various you know, channel, uh, channel S parameter files. For all four channel conditions, the CTLE setting is showing an open eye. So again, uh, as I said before, uh, you could have a single uh, Excel file and go ahead and perform all this uh, permutation and combination in a single batch simulation. Hope this video was of some help. Subscribe to my channel for more such interesting video. Happy designing and wish you a good luck.